예수님께서 보내주신 대원의 사자이십니다 약속의 목자 청의자님께서 등단하시고 계십니다 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다 하시겠습니다. 신천지 말씀 대성회에 참석하신 Greetings to all pastors, theology students, and believers from all over the world attending Shincheonji's Bible Seminar. I am Lee Gi Won, the tribe leader who will be presiding today. Today we give glory to God. On such a precious day, with precious people gathered, we have been given this time to become one in the Word of God. It seems that God has valued your longing for the Word and led you to this place. As this is a place where we gathered with the topic of God and the Word, I hope that you will open your minds and hearts and listen carefully. Before listening to the word, there will be a representative prayer from tribe leader Yu Youngju. Then, in continuation, we will watch a special video. Most Holy Father God, Creator of all things and the source of life, we give thanks and glory to you forever and ever. for the grace and love that is always being given to us. Today, at this time, we sincerely thank you for allowing s h i n c h o n j i s Bible Seminar with the topic of the testimony on the fulfillment of Revelation. Father God, you have been working on restoration and salvation for approximately 6,000 years. Also, we believe that the new covenant that is the New Testament promises that your kingdom will be established through Jesus. That work is being fulfilled as promised on this earth today. In order to testify this fact, the testimony on the fulfillment of Revelation to all the families of the world, we have come to hold this s h i n c h o n j i Bible Seminar. Chairman Yi m a n h e of s h i n c h o n j i Church of Jesus, who will speak your words today, was by Jesus' side, seeing and hearing everything when He, Jesus, fulfilled the book of Revelation, and is the messenger of Jesus who was sent to testify to the churches of what He saw and heard according to Jesus' instructions. Please allow everyone here to understand and be sealed with the words spoken through the messenger of Jesus, so that all of us can become people who do not add to or take away from the book of Revelation and fulfill our hope of the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. In particular, many pastors who work hard and put in effort to spread the gospel of Jesus are attending this Bible seminar. God, please remember the hard work of the pastors who are participating in this event and love them even more. Please grant us ears, eyes, and hearts to hear, see, and understand the words testified today. God, you are one. Jesus is one. And the Bible is the same Bible. Therefore, please let us all become one in you, God, Jesus, and the word of truth, and let us achieve your purpose by being of one heart and one mind. And please help all the people in the world who are watching through video to understand and believe in the word being testified so that they can be saved. Please allow everyone to become a member of your heavenly family. Also, please grant your great grace to all the people involved who rented us the venue and all those who cooperated for this event. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
The number of first fruits graduating at the 100,000 member graduation ceremony of the 12 tribes of Sincheonji today is 103,764. In 2019, Shincheonji Zion Christian Mission Center, the 100,000 member graduation of Class 110. The largest number... Hello, the religious leaders from around the world. I am Iman Hee, a Christian living in Korea. Translated and broadcasted into 24 languages. As I attended the special lectures of s h i n c h o n j i my thoughts and knowledge about the Bible were shattered and changed. The more I listen to the words of s h i n c h o n j i the more I see that these words are true. So signing an MOU with a church that has the truth was a natural result. Today, through the grace of God, the two churches are signing an MOU together. I changed the name of the theological seminary that I had been operating to h a p t o s i o n Christian Mission Center. From 2023 until from starting from 2003, the signing of MOU to the to join the denomination, 598 churches in 28 countries. And you are showing the fulfillment. Even you are showing the, you know, the testimony of this fulfillment. I changed it to s h i n c h a n g because of the, the word, the truth of the word that is being taught, the revealed word. Now the old wineskin has passed away and the new wineskin has come. s h i n c h o n j i word of revelation acknowledged by the world. With the testimony of the fulfillment of the book of revelation, check your qualifications for salvation. The testimony of the fulfillment of revelation. Did you enjoy the video? We watched together the image of Shincheonji developing rapidly around the world. This is impossible with human strength alone, and it was possible because God and Jesus are with Shincheonji. We give all glory to God. Now is the time for the word to be testified. I would like to briefly introduce the chairman who will deliver the world today. In Revelation chapter 5, there is a book sealed with God's seven seals. This book is the book of Revelation, and it is said that no one in heaven or on earth knows it. God gave this book to Jesus, and Jesus opened the seals one by one, starting from Revelation chapter 6, fulfilling the events recorded in the book of Revelation. And it is recorded in Revelation chapter 22 verse 8 that there was one person beside him who saw and heard all these things. Also, to the one who saw and heard these things was told to eat the open book in Revelation chapter 10. And Jesus told his messenger in Revelation chapter 22 verse 16, to go and testify to the churches about the reality and words of revelation he had seen and heard. 
The person who saw and heard these things next to Jesus in Revelation chapter 22 verse 8, the person who received and ate the open book in Revelation chapter 10, the messenger of Jesus in Revelation chapter 22 verse 16, he is the chairman of Shincheonji Church who will testify the word today. If you are a believer who hopes for the kingdom of heaven, you must see and hear the events of the war of Revelation and receive the testimony of the chairman who testifies to both the physical reality and actual entities of Revelation. This is because these are not the words of man, but the words of Jesus being advocated. We hope that you will open your hearts wide and receive great grace from the words of the chairman who testifies to the book of Revelation without adding to or taking away from it. Now let us welcome Chairman Imani who will deliver the word. Let us give... Let us give a big round of applause. Greetings to everyone. It's, it's a pleasure to meet all of you today. Especially today, I heard that many pastors of Korea have attended today, so I'm very thankful. I, the speaker of today, is Limani from Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Regarding the revelation that I will testify today, I will tell you about what I saw and heard. In the past, I was a farmer who farmed in the countryside. I was, um, I was serving in the military, and then after I was discharged, I went back to the countryside. And in the field, I was thinking about what happened in the military, and I gave thanks to God in prayer. It was a very large field. There was no house or no people. It was a huge field. And there, my father and I, two of us, worked there. We, we built a hut. We built a farmer's hut there. And what kind of prayer did I, did I say? I didn't know about the church or the Bible at all at the time. In various ways, I survived from war. So I was very thankful to God. So I prayed. I prayed to God every night, every evening. Can you hear me at the back of the room? Oh, yes. So you can hear me. That's good. So that's how I prayed. It wasn't a vision or a dream. And there was a star that I always saw, and I called it my star. And I was able to see the star even during the day daytime. So I, I even asked others to, um, to see that star. I pointed, pointed to it. And when I pray, I pray to God. I made a request to the star as well. I was so thankful. The Korean War, during the Korean War, I was um, serving in the military. I was fighting as a soldier. It was a war amongst the same people within the same nation. And there were firing, there were bombs. It was hard even for a plant to survive in that kind of situation. In, during the war, 
sometimes people retreat, but are there other, others waiting with food? No. Do you think more people died from being shoot, or do you think more people died from star- starving? So that was the kind of war. It was very painful. There are still military in Korea. And most most men experience serving in the military. And those soldiers who fought in the front lines, they would remember what I'm saying. We we were so hungry, many people died. The reason why I started the global peace movement is because when a war breaks out, all these young people, all the young people die. They they are the ones who are sacrificed, no matter what country it is. So why must we fight this kind of war? That is why I started the movement of world peace and restoration of light, this global peace movement, because it is so unfair for the young people. Yes, that is true. I I never learned the Bible from anyone. I wasn't evangelized by anyone. However, but one day, one evening, A star came from the sky, and it didn't look like a star. It just looked like light. I was so fearful and scared, so I couldn't look at it. So I ran to the house. It's still in the uh, the middle of the field. There was only a hut that was built. And I went to my father, who was sleeping. I woke him up and told him, The star came, the star came. So my father came out and saw the star. He was, he was very surprised. He said, that star is so huge and so bright. And the star came to me for three days. And after that, I pledged to God in, in blood and started to walk on, the light, walk on the path of the life of faith. I didn't go to any church before. I was just a farmer. So I didn't know anything at the time. I I never learned about the Bible before. I didn't go to church. So I didn't know anything. So I could only testify to what I saw and heard. What I saw and heard. And now, with the Bible, I read the Bible, I talk about the Bible, but at the time, I I didn't know anything. So by the guidance of heavens, I was in the mountains for a long time. After that time, I've reached this point. So now that I think about it, this word of God, the word of promise, this word of prophecy, it's not something people can know just because they want to know. It's recorded by the heavens, and if it's sealed by the heavens, before heaven reveals it and shows it, no one can know. This is what I can feel now. So I've come to know this word. Before knowing the word, one must see the fulfilled reality of this book. Prophecies were recorded in this book 2,000 years ago. And in the world, there was no one who knew about the fulfilled reality. It says no one in heaven or on earth. Because why? Because it hasn't been fulfilled yet. Prophecies are recorded in the book, but the fulfilled realities, 
were nowhere to be found. And today, I do not desire to talk about the prophecies, but I want to talk about the fulfillment, the the fulfilled realities of the prophecies. It's very amazing. No one could know about the prophecies for thousands of years. This words of the pro- uh, the words of the book, but the fact that the fulfillment can be testified today, it's something amazing. God prophesied so that He can fulfill it. He prophesied something that He will fulfill. So, dear pastors, you're very familiar with Matthew 24. When Matthew 24 is fulfilled, there is no no visible change in the world. These events in Jerusalem take place, but in the world, people get married, they buy and sell, things are still the same. So it's a religious event not a worldly thing, worldly event or war. That's not, that's not the case. And it's the same for Revelation. The prophecies are recorded in the book of Revelation. And when they're, when they're fulfilled, we must keep it without adding or subtracting from it. And it's recorded, if you add or subtract, then you won't be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. So today, if I ask you, if I ask you, have you added or subtracted from the book of Revelation, what would you say? You might want to ask, well, do you know? I would say, yes, I do know. So, the word that became flesh, that became reality, I want to testify about it. So, I will tell you uh, one by one, and it's regarding the book of Revelation. On my way here, I was thinking maybe I should talk about Matthew 24, but my, uh, I changed my mind when I got here. I decided to talk about the book of Revelation. So all of your, all of your pastors have been struggling with and um, wrestling with, the, with this book, Bible. You've seen Matthew 24 many times. But, but not the fulfilled reality. You've been reading uh, prophecies, the books of prophecy, but not the fulfilled reality. So I want to tell you about this revelation. Revelation begins from chapter 1, and it says, God wants to show his servants what must soon take place, and he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. So John did everything that he was instructed to do. This is about chapter 1 of Revelation. For Revelation to be fulfilled, what must take place first? Jesus came with and he worked through these seven stars, the seven messengers. This is uh, recorded in Revelation 2 and 3. So Jesus came and he started to work through the seven stars, the seven golden uh, lampstands. It is recorded that these seven stars are the seven messengers and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So Jesus came with this, and he appointed the seven, and I myself didn't see that very moment when Jesus appointed the seven messengers. But in Revelation 2 and 3, they are messengers of God, messengers of Jesus. But they committed sin. 
Why is that? It's written in Revelation 2 and 3. The Nicolaitans entered in. These pastors of Satan entered into the tabernacle and with their teachings and with their food, they gave this food to the seven messengers to eat. So it, this, is, this does not belong to God. So the seven The seven messengers received that food from the Nicolaitans, and they were educated by these pastors of Satan. Jesus, who appointed the seven, and as it says in Revelation 1 9, Jesus chooses one person. After that kind of event of two, Revelation 2 and 3 happens, Jesus chooses one person. And then Jesus explained about the seven messengers, about the Nicolaitan as, as well. And hearing what Jesus said, That person is told to send letters to the seven messengers urging their uh, repentance. The Nicolaitans, they're the pastors of Satan. They gave food sacrifice to idols, even. So Jesus chooses one person. And That person told the seven messengers, as Jesus said, fight and overcome the Nicolaitans. If you fight and overcome, I will give you these blessings. Those are the, prof- those are the words in Revelation 2 and 3. If you fight and overcome the Nicolaitans, these pastors of Satan, then I will give you these blessings. That was the promise of Jesus in Revelation 2 and 3. So we can say Revelation 2 and 3 is a promise. So after this event, one person was chosen according to Revelation 1, and Jesus showed him all the, all the reality, explained all the reality. And it, this is a mystery, this mystery of the seven stars, And Jesus told all the reality. Now to the seven messengers, after the event of Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus chooses one person and he explains everything to that person. And then told him to send letters, to send letters to the seven messengers asking them to repent. So, This person chosen by Jesus, when would he appear? He would appear after the seven messengers, after the Nicolaitans. Then this person who sends the letters will appear. That's the order. We must not add or take away from this book of prophecy. So we are looking at the order and logic. So this person chosen, the, the chosen person, He wouldn't know if Jesus didn't tell him or explain anything to him. And um, how was Jesus described? He, He came in spirit, not in flesh. He, his uh, appearance was described in, a, in this fantastical way. So we know that he came in spirit. So after that, uh, the letters, the letters were sent. Jesus appointed the seven messengers. They are the seven churches. And Nicolaitans came into this, came into them. And with the Satan's teachings, With Satan's food, they fed the seven messengers. Do you know what this food is? If you know, please raise your hand. Do you know what this food is? We have gathered here and we are sharing here so that we can know these things. This kind of mystery, we can never know 
There's no one in heaven or or, or on earth who can know about this mystery unless the heavens reveal it. It is written, if you add or take away, we cannot enter heaven and we will be cursed. So we need to know everything. We can enter heaven only when we keep God's word of promise. We've carried out our life of faith, and I'm sure you've been teaching many people. So I'm, I'm sure you are very well aware of these things. But this mystery, it was hidden. No one could know about it. But in heart, we, make, we try to make the effort to do better. That is the truth. I started my life of faith not because I wanted to. I was just a farmer who didn't know anything. So, What should I do? The only thing I can talk about is what I saw and heard. Yes, that is true. Now, after reading the Bible, I realized oh, what are these things that are written in the Bible. But at the time, I didn't know about the Bible. I didn't go to church. So I knew nothing. So when the letters are sent, there has to be the receiver. Let's say there are seven. If I say, you seven, have you received the letters? Who sent you the letters? I can ask that kind of question, right? I'm the one who sent the letters. I heard and sent the letters. It's not because I wanted to, but I followed the instructions. This might be difficult to understand. But the appearance of Jesus, that's what I saw too. And I heard Jesus spoke as well. So I wrote the letters. If you read the letters, it's not only good things that are written. They're also bad things. How can, it can be offensive too. So how can I send these, this kind of letters to other people? So I had to be uh, resolved. But it was the command of heaven. So I sent all the letters. These seven people, these seven churches, the seven messengers appeared first, and then the Nicolaitans, the Satan's pastors, entered into them and fed them with food sacrificed to idols. And then third, I was chosen to send the letters. This order and logic, we need to understand clearly. Even if many good things are written in the Bible, when it's fulfilled, if we don't understand the fulfilled reality, then nothing, uh, there's no good. We need to know there are prophecies, and when prophecies are fulfilled, It's fulfillment, the fulfilled reality that appears. Let's say you see a piece of bread that appears. It actually has to appear, then you can eat it. Right? Just Just like that. In Matthew 1, In Matthew 15, 24, Jesus came as the fulfilled reality of the Old Testament prophecy. So Jesus was the reality of Ezekiel 3. And Jesus says that in Matthew uh, Matthew 15, 24, just like that. 
이 사람도 계시록이 말하는 역에 대해서 And regarding the book of Revelation, the fulfilled realities must appear. Letters were sent to the seven messengers. Do you know their names? Do you know their faces? If you didn't see or hear, then you wouldn't know. I know the faces of the seven messengers. I know their ages at the time. I'm, I'm very well aware. That's why I can testify. Because I know. Because I was told. I was told to send letters to them. These are the letters from Jesus. So I sent all the letters. After that, what happened? As recorded in Revelation 4, the one who told me to send letters, he told me to come up. So I went up. There was that throne of God, the place where the throne of God was found. So I saw and I saw the spirits moving and they were moving like flashes of lightning. So Revelation 1, 2, 3, it already began. So the heavens are fulfilling what, what were prophesied. They are fulfilling the prophecies. And that sight them moving were like flashes of lightning. People might be idle on earth, but in heaven, because they promised to fulfill this, the spirits are moving like flashes of lightning to fulfill the prophecies. So I saw that sight, and I also saw God's throne. So Revelation 4, takes place after Revelation 2 and 3. That voice told me to come up, so I went up to heaven, and I saw God's throne. Yes, I saw God's throne. And the spirits are so, are so busy working to fulfill the prophecies, but people here on earth who want to be saved, they have no idea. Because they have no idea of that, of the spirits moving like that, people are quite idle. But if if, uh, if we know, if we know this, we have to work really hard. And there's something I heard. I heard that the throne of God will come to this earth. Did you see the throne of God come to this earth? God didn't lie, right? Revelation 14. There is that throne of God right there, Revelation 14. What kind of people are gathered there? The fruits that are harvested. And the number was 144,000 of the 12 tribes. They're gathered at Mount Zion, it says. So the throne of God in Revelation 4, it says that the throne of God will come to this earth. What's the reality of that? It's Revelation 14, that throne at Mount Zion. And that throne is the throne in Revelation 15. The word of the Bible is a path that leads us to where God is. The Bible, the word is our path. If we follow that path, we will get to where God is. Yes, that is correct. We must not look down on the Bible or take it lightly. We must not think that the Bible is something we can believe or not. Take it lightly. No. We must believe it and keep it. 
the more we learn about the Bible, we realize that it's such a precious word. So if we keep the word and enter into heaven, paradise, that's a good thing. But if we don't believe, if we believe in the wrong thing, and if we cannot reach heaven, then we will end up in hell where there is eternal punishment. So we are carrying our life of faith between these two things, heaven and hell. God's word is not a lie. Prophecy is a prophecy, but when it's time to be fulfilled, that everything is fulfilled without adding or taking away, then we need to carry our life of faith. We need to be very clear about, oh, this is prophecy, this is fulfillment. So in Revelation 4, there is the throne of God. I was told to come up, so I went up and saw God's throne and heard that God's throne came, will come to this earth. And in Revelation 14, there is that God's throne. There are 144,000, the 12 tribes, the harvested and the sealed ones are gathered. That's where God's throne is. And in Revelation 15, it says that place is the place where all nations come to worship. That's because God is with there. With, uh, God is there. And it is, and it is the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, testifying about the fulfillment. What kind of people are they? In Revelation 12, there are those who fought and overcame the dragon, the victorious ones, and those those who overcame are gathered in. at that temple and they are the ones who testify about the fulfillment that's why they're called the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in the world of Christianity uh, in the world there are many Christians but where must they go? they must go to this temple in Revelation 15 that place is the same place in Revelation 14 And they are the 12 tribes created in Revelation 7. Isn't that correct? Just because you go to church every week, that shouldn't be enough, but we must understand God's word and believe in what we understand. That's the life of faith. Just going to church every week, that's not all. That's not enough. we must understand. Because it says, if you add or take away, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. We must understand. Let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24 talks about Jerusalem, God's kingdom, God's temple. And it says, uh, there's going to be war. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. So there's a war. So what happens as a result? People in Jerusalem lost the war. But the opposers win, and they're standing in the holy place, it says. That's what it says in Matthew 24, right? So the sun, moon, and stars turn dark and fall. And what what do these sun, moon, and stars represent? Represent the people of Israel. So they turn dark and they fall. So this event of Israel being destroyed. After that, Jesus comes. If you read 13, 14, 15, after after Jerusalem is destroyed, Jesus comes. 
And Jesus comes with his angels to, to gather the elect from the four winds, it says. So after what kind of event does Jesus come to gather and harvest the people? Right? After what kind of event? If we want to believe in the Bible, if we want to understand the Bible, we need to understand every single thing. Not just, we shouldn't just say we believe with our lips. If we understand the book of Revelation, it's not for others' sake, but it's for our own sake. Because if I, can, if I understand, I can teach it to others. If I don't know anything, then I can teach it to others. So in, in Revelation, the scroll was given to one person for him to eat, and to one person, all the events were shown. And that one person was sent to, was sent to the churches to testify. So then who should the churches be waiting for? They all call on Jesus. They say, Jesus, Lord. But if they truly believe in Jesus, they have to accept the person that Jesus sends. Dear pastors, what do you think about this? Revelation 22, 16 says that there is the one who saw all the events of Revelation. It is written in Revelation 22, 8. It says, I, John, who saw and heard all this. And this person was sent to the churches to testify. then we have to follow this word. We have to obey the words of Jesus. We shouldn't uh, be stubborn or stick to our own thoughts, but we have to obey the words of Jesus. Isn't that right? this book of Revelation, is it being fulfilled today or not? If it's being fulfilled, how much has it been fulfilled? Up to which point has it been fulfilled? What's remaining to be fulfilled? These kind of questions we should ask. Right? As true believers, we should ask these kind of questions. So everyone, If you look at Revelation, it says, Revelation 7 and 4, uh, Revelation 7 and 14, when Revelation is fulfilled, there is the work of harvest. And the fruits are harvested, and there is a place where the fruits are gathered. Right? The fruits are gathered in one place. And they're created into 12 tribes. Revelation 14 and 7, they are created into 12 tribes. If this is God's promise, then it has to be fulfilled exactly according to this word. With, we need to know what is really true or false with the Bible, according to the Bible. If the Bible says this is going to happen, then that's going to happen. The Bible says that the, there's going to be harvest, there's going to be the work of sealing, and then the 12 tribes will be created, and the great multitude in white will come. And the kingdom of the world will become the kingdom of our God. As it says in Revelation 11.15. So we have many saints, we are educating them. So our dear pastors should learn this word and teach it. Every Wednesday, this should be taught to the saints, to the believers, so that they can eat it and uh, so that it's, it's their food for their spirit. As it says in Matthew 10, people are made up of 
spirit, soul, and flesh. If our flesh dies, it's only of our flesh that dies, but our spirit doesn't die, it remains. Isn't that correct? So the Bible is something that believers must have. Must, we all need this Bible. Without it, we're uh, no better than blind. We, but with this Bible, we can walk on the correct path. This book of Revelation is regarding the time of Jesus' second coming. So, the appearance of Jesus is described, and he begins through the seven stars, and that event is described in Revelation 2 and 3, and Jesus chooses one person, and makes him send letters. And after sending the letters, Jesus tells that person to come up to heaven. And the person sees the throne of God and sees the voice, the sound, and the movements of spirits. After four, it's Revelation 5. So it's, it's a connection. And there is the uh, scroll sealed in the right hand of God. And God, is, God has this sealed scroll. It's sealed so no one in heaven or on earth who could understand, who could see it. But Jesus takes it from the right hand of God, and from Revelation 6, he opens each seal. This scroll was sealed with seven seals, so until it's opened, no one can know about what's written in, inside the scroll. And who took it? Jesus took it. And Jesus opened all the seals. The last seal is broken. The seventh seal is broken in chapter 8. Now all the seals are broken. So there are seven trumpets. And according to the order and logic, the seven trumpets are blown. And what is this trumpet? It makes known what has taken place. Those who have been driven out in Revelation 6, and they are sacrificed in Revelation 8 and 9. And that process of those people being sacrificed, the trumpets are sounded to make those events known. And who are these people who are killed? So, after the seals are broken, now there are the seven trumpets, and when the seven trumpets are blown, at the sound of the last trumpet, it's a big deal. So, the trumpets are the sound making known what to, what took place. It's not the songs of the world, but it's the sound making known what happened, what took place. The, the trumpets are sounded, and at the, there's one last trumpet remaining. And Revelation 11, 15 talks about the last seven trumpet. And when that sound, uh, when that trumpet is sounded, it says the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of our God. So it's something great, this last trumpet. And this trumpet can uh, appear only after the, all the seals are broken. So this is the order and logic of Revelation. So just going to church every week is not enough, but God is the Word. God is the Word. 
And when God fulfills His word, He told us to see and believe. John 14, 29. I've told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. That is true. All these things written in Revelation, it's been thousands of years since these words were given to us. And when they're fulfilled, we have to see and believe. But today, people say, I believe out of habit, but they don't know what they should believe. But that shouldn't, ha- that shouldn't happen. Whether it's one or two things, we need to know something clearly according to the scriptures. We can't just say, I believe, I believe. But God told us to believe what um, He promised when it's fulfilled. There are prophecies to be fulfilled. And when it's that time of fulfillment, those words of prophecies are fulfilled. So Ezekiel 3, that prophecy in Ezekiel 3 is fulfilled in Matthew 15, 24. Jesus ate that scroll and came and testified to it. So today, Revelation 10, there is that open scroll. Jesus took the scroll from the right hand of God. He opened, Jesus opened the scroll and gave it to the angel. And the angel, In Revelation 10, the angel gives that open scroll to the one who sent the letters for him to eat. And then he says, go and prophesy again to the people's nations, languages, and kings. So the scroll went from God to Jesus, Jesus to angel, and angel to this person called John. And it's now in in his stomach. That is the truth, right? So these words of this book, who can can testify to this word? It's only the one who ate this, ate this scroll. It's nowhere else to be found. This one scroll, it was delivered through certain logic and order. And and the words that this person speaks is the truth. Matthew 15, 24, Jesus also ate that scroll in Ezekiel 3 and came and testified to that word. He didn't just speak of his own, but he ate that scroll and testified. It is the same for the book of Revelation. This person eats the scroll and testifies. So if you eat potatoes and if you throw throw up, then what will come out? Only potatoes. It's the same thing. The one who ate the scroll, these 13 pages of the book of Revelation, If he ate that scroll, then he would speak the words of this scroll, this book of Revelation, and he should be able to testify to it. The one who didn't see or the one who didn't receive that scroll, how can he testify? How can he say this or that about the the book? That would be going up against God's word. Several years ago, There were false pastors. And they they were talking about this Mark 666. They were saying, oh, it's Russia or Soviet Union, whatever. They were saying this and that about, about things in Revelation. If they don't understand, then if God doesn't tell them what it is, then they can understand. So they cannot just speak of their own. What is what is from the devil? What is from what is from falsehood? 
So the book of Revelation, what kind of person received that scroll and what kind of person can testify to this? This order and logic is recorded in the book of Revelation. If you ask, did you see the seven messengers? If that person didn't see, he can't say, he can't say that he saw. And he can't say the names. But the one who sent the letters would know, would know them. Because he's the one who sent, actually sent the letters to them. I can say uh, their names because of the legal issue of defamation. Because they are these seven, these seven betrayed against God, uh, against Jesus. So all the events took place in order. If I talk about uh, these people who betrayed, then I can be, I can, uh, there's an illegal issue of defamation, but this actually happened in reality. The letters were sent asking them to repent, but did they repent? If they did, if they did repent, why would they be judged in Revelation 6? In Revelation 6, these people are judged. In Revelation 6, heaven, both heaven and earth pass away. In Revelation 21, it says, first heaven and first earth pass away. We read the prophecies of four Gospels and Revelation. All of them must be fulfilled without adding or taking away. And we must understand everything and follow the word. Keep it. Whatever is happening in the world, even when God is working, when God's work is being done and fulfilled, it, people are still the same in the world. But what will God do? Um, it, it says that first heaven and first earth come to an end, they pass away. And now there is the new heaven and earth, and God's kingdom will come there. It is not for the evil world. So all the wrongful things come to an end. So these contents of revelation, even if we want to understand and see these contents, we cannot understand without the fulfilled reality. But when it's fulfilled, we can see. But I'm, I'm, not I'm not bringing up the actual names, the real names of the people, because of the legal issue. But these people, in Revelation 6, they're judged. And that's because even after receiving the letters, they do not repent. That's why they are, uh, they are put to an end. It says the sun, moon, and stars are uh, turned dark and they fall. Who are these sun, moon, and stars? As you can see in Genesis 37, it's the family, the father, mother, and the children. It's not the literal sun, moon, and stars in the sky, but it's a parable. It's figurative. So in Revelation 6, this family in Revelation 6 comes to an end, and it's described as sun, moon, and stars turning dark and fall. They come to an end, and also there are those who are driven out, those who run away, th those who flee. And these people in Revelation 8 and 9, they're sacrificed. Where do they run off to? It would have been better for them to repent, but they are driven out. If I tell you, uh, if I tell you all the details, um, then it will take an hour to to explain each chapter. But we don't have that much time, so I will summarize.
I'm summarizing. So that's what happens in Revelation 6. Those people who are driven out in Revelation 8 and 9, they're sacrificed. And you can read it, Revelation 8 and now, how they're uh, spiritually killed. And these people, uh, these people who Jesus first appointed, they come to end because of their sin. And the angel comes with an open scroll. He gives it to the one who sends the letters for him to eat. And he says to the person, go and prophesy again to people's nations, languages, and kings. And just like how Jesus received the scroll, in Ezekiel 3 and testify to the peoples the one who received the open scroll in Revelation 10 is not Jesus but he's a, he's a messenger of Jesus and that process is explained one by one so he eats it in Revelation 10 we should get rid of our arrogance or uh, any lies but we have to listen to the words testify the one who ate the open scroll Jesus opened uh, broke all the seals and opened the scroll and Jesus gave it to the angel and the angel gave it to John for him to eat. So where did this scroll go? How did it move? We can see. So now, now where is the scroll? Since the, since the person ate it, it should be in his stomach. It's in his stomach, right? How can you tell? If you listen to the words that he speaks, you can tell. The world is big. There are many people living inside. But if you want to understand the words of the scroll, then you have to go and listen to the one who ate that scroll. Just like how Jesus ate the open scroll and came and, and testified. 2,000 years ago, people had to go to Jesus and listen to him to understand the words of the scroll. But today, it's not Jesus who eats the scroll. So people have to go to the one who eats the scroll and listen, listen to, listen to him. This is Revelation 10. And if you go to Revelation 11, now the person testifies to the scroll, but there are opposers now in Revelation 10. And the one who ate the scroll experiences great, great suffering. This is described in Revelation 11. But the result, what is the result? The kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of our God. In verse 15. So this book of Revelation that we must not add or take away from, all the things written must be fulfilled. Every word. In Matthew 25, it talks about how um, there are people who, are, who testify to the word and they are persecuted and they are imprisoned. And this should be fulfilled too. If these are the words of Jesus, then that should also happen as well. Also, it's the same for Book of Revelation. Every word has to be fulfilled. All the events must take place. Whether it's Revelation 1, 2, 3, all the fulfilled realities have appeared. 
But uh, it's, it's unfortunate that I cannot tell you the actual names of the people, but I can tell you the events that took place. The, all the seals are broken. The seven trumpets in Revelation 8 and 9, well, when each trumpet is blown, if you hear the sound of the trumpet, it's not ordinary trumpets, but it's making known what took place. So people became those trumpets. So those who saw and heard tell about the events, they're like trumpets raising their voice and, and proclaim, just like uh, the Old Testament says. And also there, there were wars and battles too, but after that it says the kingdom of the world can become the kingdom of our God. But in Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus told them seven times, fight and overcome. But overcome against who? The Nicolaitans, pastors of Satan, fight and overcome them. If, if they have to fight and overcome, with what? They can overcome with the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. This is described in Revelation 12. Now we're uh, uh, we're now we're, we're in Revelation 12. It says they overcame with the word of testimony, the blood of with the blood of the lamb and the word of testimony. So the word of testimony is needed. So the events must take place in order for them to testify. So all these things that I've explained from chapter 1, 2, up to 12, all these events must take place. And there's been this continuous war between God and Satan. There's a continuous issue of sin and people being saved. So what we need to do is we have to believe in the words and keep it. Revelation 11, uh, Revelation 12, there's a war between God's side and the dragon's group. There's this child born from the woman and his brothers, they fight and overcome the dragon. And as Jesus said, fight and overcome again and again in Revelation 23, and he promised to give blessings. And those who overcame in Revelation 12 can receive those blessings, promised in Revelation 2 and, 2 and 3. That's amazing, amazing blessings. What does it say? The name of the holy city, the name of God, and the new name of Jesus will be recorded, will be written on the one overcomes. That's something amazing. In, and it says the one overcomes will sit with Jesus on his throne. And who's the enemy to fight over, to fight and overcome against? It's the Satan's group, past, false pastors of Satan. And, and it says, after overcoming, now have come the salvation and the kingdom of God, which means without overcoming, there is no salvation or God's kingdom. I believe everyone can understand this. So there has been this continuous fighting there's God's army and Satan's army and the issue is uh, one must overcome so they overcome in Revelation 12 now there is God's kingdom and the dragon's group is kicked out so in God's church in God's kingdom you can see that the dragon's group came in. The devil's group came in. This is what we see in Revelation 13. But because the dragon lost, he's kicked out. 
driven out. This is what happens in Revelation 12. And since that time, now there is salvation and God's kingdom this, from this time of fulfillment when revelation is fulfilled. And there is also God's kingdom and people. This is, uh, you can see this in Revelation 7. In Revelation 7, there's the work of seal. It's the 144,000 that are sealed. So this is not something ordinary, but when revelation is fulfilled, those who are harvested, those who are sealed, they become the 144,000. It's not talking about people before Revelation is fulfilled. If you, please read, please read through the book of Revelation. What does it say in Revelation 14? It says, the earth is ripe, so harvest. Harvest with the sickle. And who are these people? They are the 12 tribes, 145,000. And with them, there is God's throne. Will you deny this or will you believe this? If you deny it, that means you don't believe in the Bible. These 12 tribes, the sealed ones, God's throne is with them. And the first fruits are here. They are the 12 tribes. Then, do you have 12, 12 tribes in your church, in your denomination? Please think about this matter. Should we, should we forget about the 12 tribes that are written in the Bible? These, these 144,000, the 12 tribes, written in 14 and 7 of Revelation, they are the sealed ones. They are the, those born of God's seed. They're created into God's kingdom, the 12 tribes. So in the time of Revelation, this is not the first heaven and first earth, but the new heaven and new earth, the newly created people. So how can we, how can we ignore them or deny them? It's not something we can deny. Revelation 21, it says that God and heaven will come. Where would they come to on this earth? Where would they come? It will come to the 12 tribes that are created here on earth as it is in heaven. If you say this is wrong, please, please tell me with the Bible. Those born of God's seed, and they are sealed. And with them, the 12 tribes are created. God will come to them nowhere else. We must overcome with the truth, not with our fist, but we have to fight and overcome with, with the word. Jesus promised that he will give all the blessings to the one who overcomes. So all these things were recorded in the book of Revelation. And what does it say in Revelation 14? There is God's throne. And in Revelation 15, there is also God's throne. And all nations come, come and worship at this place because God is here. God is here at this place. And that temple... What's the name of that temple? Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. What are they testifying? They are testifying about revelation because that's what they saw and heard. So this is the temple that temple of the tabernacle that testifies. So are you going to just ignore the Bible? Should we just ignore the Bible, create our own denominations, and call other cults? We have to speak with the Bible. Whether, whether we, we say someone is cult or not, we have to speak based on the Bible. We must not speak of our own. If we want, if we want to go to heaven, then we have to think about the, the 
believers of the past, they believed in the Bible and they followed the word. What does it say in Revelation 6? The, the, uh, the seven bowls are poured out. And, who are, and what are these seven bowls? They are people. God's word cannot be contained in a, in a literal bowl, but it can only be contained in God's uh, in person's heart. So, a person is likened to a bowl or, or a vessel. So, God's word is contained in these people who are likened to seven bowls, and they're poured out onto betrayers and destroyers. And it's, it's called, they're called the kingdom of Babylon, and they're all destroyed. Because that's why we need the one who overcomes, and we need the people, God's people, who are created according to the word. What, what is Revelation 17? There is the prostitute. And many people, it says that many people ate the food that the prostitute gave. As it says in Revelation 2, they ate that food. It's not just one or two, but it says all nations. What does it say in Revelation 18? It says all nations drank the maddening wine of adulteries from Babylon. So what kind of world did it become? And in that kind of situation, God's work began. So that is why there is the war, there is this battle. But Matthew 10, those who endure to the end, they're saved. Because, uh, because there is such difficulty, uh, Jesus said such thing in Matthew 10. So there are, uh, in Revelation 7, there's the prostitute, beast with seven heads and ten horns. And it says that God, this is all under control of God. And Babylon is the kingdom of demons. And it says that all nations are deceived by Babylon. So, God judges Babylon. And it's not the saints, the people that judge, judge the Babylon. It says, God will judge Babylon himself. And so far, uh, Revelation has been fulfilled up to Revelation 17. 18 is remaining. It's yet to be fulfilled. And God will it's not us going there to fight and judge Babylon. It's going to be God judging Babylon himself. So wouldn't you want to check whether Revelation is really fulfilled up to Revelation 17? Wouldn't you want to check? Instead of labeling someone as a cult, there is the Bible, the standard. We should check with the Bible. We should ask questions. Why do you testify in such a way? Why do you say such thing with the Bible? But we can't just, we can't just uh, curse or, or call someone a cult outside of the Bible. It would be better to to go to the mountains and talk in that way with the trees. Even the trees wouldn't want to hear that kind of thing. Right? Trees wouldn't want to hear from uh, that kind of thing. But we, we have to speak with the Bible. Revelation 19 has to be fulfilled. There's that wedding banquet of the Lamb. At the end of Revelation 18, and, and Revelation 19.1 starts with, begins with, after this. And after this, there's the wedding banquet of the Lamb. This is the process of, of Revelation being fulfilled. So Revelation has been fulfilled up to chapter 17. 
So you need to check how it's been fulfilled. Where is that fulfillment? Where is the fulfilled reality? But 18 is yet to be fulfilled. 19 is yet to be fulfilled. And it says, after this, there's the wedding banquet of the Lamb. So 18 must be fulfilled first. Then after that, there is the wedding banquet of the Lamb. Then after this marriage, after this wedding, there there will be the first resurrection. This is the order and logic of salvation. When this happens, the holy city, New New Jerusalem in heaven will come and everything will be solved. All the saints of Shinchanji, Uh, It is no exaggeration to say that all the saints take uh, exams every week to check whether they're really sealed with the Word. They take tests. Now they're all experts. So now it's it's difficult for me to come up with test questions because they all know. So, dear pastors, how how about I give you a test? Maybe we can do it today or we can do it at another time. So, please do not say that someone is a cult. If you have something to teach, you should teach according to, according to the Bible. Those who belong to God should act in such a way. So, if pastors understand this and teach it to the believers, then the believers will be able to master this word. It is written, it is clearly written that one cannot enter heaven and one is cursed if they add or take away from this book of Revelation. That means all believers have to master it. Isn't that correct? I'm sorry to say these kind of harsh harsh things, but I'm telling you so that you can understand God's word. We're all same people. God, Jesus, and the Bible are given not to just one person, but it's given to everyone. This word, what's what's to be fulfilled is all recorded in the book. Now is not the time to teach about the prophecies, but now, now is the time of fulfillment. It is time to teach about the fulfillment, the fulfilled reality. Tell them how the prophecies have been fulfilled. So Shin c h e n j i is testifying how prophecies have been fulfilled. These prophecies in Revelation, how they have been fulfilled. So that's why I said about Revelation 1, I, I said, I know all the names of the seven messengers. I know their faces. And the Nicolaitans, these pastors of Satan, I know their faces, I know their names. And I can testify only when I know. I cannot just call someone a sinner if you don't know about them. Today, what I'm telling you is about is a brief summary of the book of Revelation. So, Let us uh, exchange letters, exchange words together so that we can understand the word. I really hope you teach it to the believers as well. It says that one cannot enter heaven if they add or subtract from the book of Revelation. So uh, we should learn it and teach it to the believers. Isn't that correct? Yes, that's what we should do. I'm telling you this today, but next time, I'm going to Busan to do another seminar. And I'm I'm actually 93 years old. I've lived very long, right? And life uh, life is with the heavens. 
So for the remaining time, what I need to do, my duty is to preach, it's to testify what I know, what I received. So please understand this. This word of God, the word of eternal life, let us understand it so that we can all go to God's kingdom, become God's people, and give all thanks and glory to our Father God. Let us become one in that purpose. Now, it's become a trend to say we are one. We are all one in Jesus Christ. We are. We're nothing without God or Jesus or the Bible. So we are one. At this time, let's say that we are one in God. We are one. Thank you very much. Yes, did the word fill you with great grace? First of all, let us give glory to God the Creator, who is the word Himself. Also, let us give a round of applause to the chairman, thanking him for testifying the precious word of life. Yes, thank you. While we listen to the word for about an hour, the chairman, the promised pastor, he testified from Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 22 and also regarding Genesis and Matthew and Ezekiel and gave us this great word. He gave this word to the you pastors with an earnest heart so that all of you would receive this word of life and all the believers could receive it and so that everyone could receive salvation. And so this was a precious time and I hope that it was the same for all of you. As you may have heard, Shincheonji is trending these days. Many people are gathering and there have been thousands of MOUs signed and hundreds of church signboards changed, especially overseas. In Korea, about 250 MOUs were signed in a year and a half, and the number of and the number continues to increase. The reason Shincheonji is growing rapidly is because God, who is the Word, is with Shincheonji. Shincheonji's best instructors have prepared follow-up educations that allow you to systematically and easily learn the best truth of mankind based on the 5 W's and 1 H principle. If you contact us at the number shown on the screen, we will provide kind consultation so that you can listen to it in the area you desire without any burden. We hope it will be a time for you to master the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and receive great blessings from heaven. Yes, we will now finish today's events by lifting up the prayer the Lord has taught us. Let us offer the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will give glory to God through applause for guiding every part of today's proceedings. The chairman will now exit. We would appreciate it if you could all stand up together and until the chairman exits first, send him off with applause with a heart of gratitude. 